Masterclass is a sponsor of the Fittish Podcast. And if you're not familiar with Masterclass, Masterclass is the only streaming platform where you can learn and grow with over 200 of the world's best, best at what they do, right? And right now, our Fittish listeners get an additional 15% off any annual membership at masterclass.com slash Fittish. Yay Networks. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Fittish Podcast. We've had an emotional day. What an intense day. And a... What, waterworks were on. Remy started school today. And it went, you know, as most of you who have had kids go to school for the first day, you probably know how it went. It's so hard to know because in moments, you know, your kid is great. and uh, But yeah, it was, it was waterworks on all of our parts today. So... You know, screaming, Mama, Papa, no. <laughs> so it always, you always want it to go the way that you wish, but it always goes the way you expect. Sure. <laughs> because we would have loved for him just to run in, like skipping, but you no, know, he was like, it's just so sad. It's so sad and happy because it's such a bittersweet emotion. It's like so happy because he's going, you know that it's something he needs for his development. You know that it's something he needs to, to be able to have those social skills that he requires to survive as a human being. And in the other side, it's like, I don't want to see him crying. I don't want to, like, he's going to have that detachment, like pain that, we're expecting him to have because he spends all of his life with us all the time. I've been really looking forward to him going to school, but I think I'm just having, I'm having a day or I'm having a week. I know on last week's show, we talked about how we were going to just kind of talk about some of our parenting challenges and struggles as of late. And I think it's so hard to navigate when your kid is going through like a developmental moment or kind of, yeah, a new, a new chapter. And obviously a lot of you had kind of expressed that maybe he was having some issues with the big move. And I definitely think that there's an element of that um, for all of us in different ways. And then obviously when your child's melting down or having tantrums, you reach kind of a different point in your relationship of parenting, right? Because you're both trying to figure out how you want to parent. And you were presented with new challenges kind of left and right. And so um, maybe I'm just having one of those moments of like, do you ever have moments where you go, am I just having a bad day or did I make a terrible life decision? <laughs> because this morning I was set off into tears before we even went to school because Remy for, this is probably the third time he's done it since we've been here. He was melting down. He had been up for hours and he was like, I want to go home. I want to go home. And oh, y'all, that just like, because I am pretty sure I know what he means, you know, and I know you think that maybe he doesn't really mean that. Um, I guess I'm feeling also that sense of not I want to go home because this is home and this is where I wanted to be. And I thought long and hard about it. But I am starting to have a moment where I'm missing our I don't want to say creature comforts. I think like our things, you know, I'm missing my bed and couch and um, our stuff, you know, like the air fryer and little things, you know, and not to come across like in the materialistic way, but kind of my comforts of my day to day. Uh, you know, it's all vacation vibes at first and then kind of real world sets in and you're living in someone else's home. And we don't have any of our things. So I, yeah, I like to be honest. I'm struggling a little bit um, as of late with that. So what do you think, what are, how are you going to cope? What are your exercises that, or what are you are planning to do to cope with these emotions? Because those are really important. Yeah. To cope? I mean, I guess coping is I just deal with it, but to improve it, just kind of analyzing I think a lot, you know, I'm in my own head a lot. What am I missing and why, you know? And I think I look at it from Remy's eyes too. I, number one priority, always him. So I think that, and I know maybe you and I don't agree on this, but I do believe that he's missing 
you know, like his playroom, not he doesn't need a million toys or anything like that. But, you know, living in someone else's house, you know, we took everything away from him. Right. He's been in a pack and play. I'd really like to get him his own bed. He's been sleeping in our bedroom. He used to have his own room. Um, that's not really conducive because the other only other bedroom is outside of the house. So we're not going to do that. But I've been thinking about turning in the guest bedroom, maybe into a playroom. I showed him around today to get him excited. He kept saying, you know, I want to go to the playroom, but he doesn't have a playroom. Um, the playroom's everywhere, obviously, but I kind of realized, I go, we took away, you know, the, I know you say I love the rocking chair, but that was like our thing, you know, that we would do it e almost every nap, every bedtime, we would rock, we would read books. Um, so just some of the day-to-day -day stuff like that, I think that he's probably yearning for a little bit. So I don't know. I think, yeah, I may buy a few things to make it a little more cozy for all of us, right? Cool. I cool. think that's a good thing to do. Like, I think that's a great, if that is what brings you comfort, you need to do what brings you that comfort that you're lacking. Something's going on with Remy though. You know, he's been screaming and throwing tem temper tantrums and it is, it's hard, isn't it? As a first time parent to know, um, this is totally normal and he's fine, you know, or is something wrong? Um, is something just emotionally wrong, you know? Um, he's just, it's, it is, it's a big adjustment. It's probably all of the above, right? It's not just that he's a toddler. It's that we made a huge move and everything's unfamiliar to him and it's kind of setting in. Well, I really believe that he, for sure, the move affected. I, I'm pretty sure what he's going through is just part of his age and his development. And I think it's something I see very often in other kids his age, and I try to observe if there is anything out of normal. But the way that he does it is so stereotypical. It's not, he's not, he doesn't get stuck in one move. He doesn't get stuck in, like, he starts screaming, going crazy, and then he comes back and he's fine. He just relaxes. He, he's trying to, again, I'm not an expert, this is my first rodeo, but I think he's trying to get into understanding what all of these emotions that he's feeling are. Me too. And I'm trying to understand all the emotions I'm feeling and that he's feeling. And um, I like to talk about it and I like to be not, you know, rah, rah, cheerleader, because I think it is real. And I think a lot of us deal with that. I think you see me post photos and, you know, video clips of our family because we do have some amazing moments. We're creating great memories here. And I think kids are really resilient. That being said, you all know that there's a large portion of the day that is rough, right? I mean, it's rough. It's like... They make a mess and he's screaming in my face. And this morning I lost it. Like I lost it in the way, I mean, I didn't yell at him. Um, I have obviously, right? I mean, I like to be honest. I um, I started crying. I started crying because I'm just like, I was you know, worried about him going to school. I woke up and told Fran, I'm kind of struggling a little bit because he's going out of town and then I'm going out of town. So we're not going to be together for a week and, you know, being in a new place. I think that these are kind of the moments that we knew were going to come, that we both have to travel for work. And unfortunately, it's fallen. We weren't planning on it this way. It's fallen in the same week. And I get a lot of anxiety, I think, around traveling. So, you know, there's a lot that goes into my emotions. But I start crying. And Remy, you know, was screaming at me. And when he saw me crying, he stopped and was like, Mama, are you OK? I go, yeah, I'm just worried about you. Are you OK? And he was like, I'm okay. So that got him to stop. So I don't know if now I just have to cry for real. I wasn't fake crying, you know, when he's acting that way. But I just think it's important to share this with y'all because I know so many of you are going through this and I think that it can be so easy, right? And I get a lot of parenting advice, like unsolicited on the internet, like, oh, you should do this or you should do this. And the point is, 
every kid's probably so different. And the way we parent, you know, you just have to navigate it, right? And I'm sure those of you that have had multiple kids go, yeah, I've had to parent every kid differently. What worked as discipline for one didn't work for the other. Or some kids are harder than others. So, or this is totally normal. A lot of you sadly have written me and said, oh, just wait, this is about to, you know, get worse before it gets better and last till they're four years old. So, you know, we'll see. I mean, obviously Remy's a great kid in general, but yeah, it's been a trying time, especially when he screams in my face <laughs> or, you know, when we're having a great time out and he's screaming. So I've taken the approach of trying to talk to him like a little adult and I take him out of the restaurant, right? Because I've read a lot of parenting stuff that says if you're going to set boundaries with your child, um, you got to stick to them. So if you say, if you scream again, we're going to leave, you can't not because they quickly learn you're a pushover. So I've been utilizing that and it works, you know, briefly, I would say. I've done it a handful of times when he's screaming. I've kind of let him out and said, do you want to go home? And we'll sit on the stairs kind of in private. I talk to him about, you know, are you feeling okay? Is something hurting? Is something wrong? Um, he acts or seems to understand in the moment, you know, and then we go back. He was pretty good yesterday when we walked back into the pool. I'm yeah. not really sure, but... I think, I uh, yeah, I, I really think that all these approaches that we use are very significant because you get immediate feedback. Like, if something works, it works right then. And if something don't work, you get the immediate feedback. You know what I'm what I'm getting at. But I really think he's very receptive when we talk to him. And of course... Sometimes the main focus of attention has to be that he is two years old. Like we have a two-year-old that we don't know for a fact how much he's retaining. I think he retains way more than, than I believe too. I think he's really receptive when you talk to him calmly. And I think... Again, he's he's too like he's explosive in the, his emotions. He's he gets loud and he and then he comes down and he it's just a matter of. So y'all can see how differently Fran and I think. Fran's always very, which is great. I mean, Fran's not worried about any of it, and I go. I definitely have my moments of going. Is my child normal or do we need to seek medical help? Is something wrong with him? Right. And I know a lot of you have written me that. I know that's not totally out of the norm. I think it's just, you know, I say it jokingly, but also not because you have moments where you feel a little bit at your wits end and you just can't understand why your perfectly normal, healthy acting child is all of a sudden just. <laughs> I really I think that it's it's very valid to ask that question, I think it's it's always good to have the thermometer of, of what you're saying. Also, you said backwards. It's like, what I'm feeling is normal, or should I seek medical attention? Should I seek a professional to talk to? Like, I, maybe I need to bounce this with a professional. We both get a good advice from someone. Hey, not only seek articles from multiple places in the internet, we have a really good sponsor that could also maybe bring some light in some part of it. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Fran. Well, speaking of sponsors, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. All right, switching gears a bit. Welcome back to the show. Hopefully everyone had a nice Father's Day. We had a, we had a nice Father's Day. We actually decided in an effort to, you know, go with the flow a little bit more because that was like a big thing, you know, why we moved here and... It's easier said than done, right? Like you want to be those parents that are like, let's take him everywhere with us and let's and we'll just figure it out. And my mom got super sick um, over the weekend and Fran and I had plans to drive about an hour. Uh, his relative was actually performing. There was a mini music festival going on in Cabo San Lucas. And so we wanted to go see her. And unfortunately, my mom was so sick. We had no child care and we're thinking oh you know it's that time I mean she was performing from 6 to 8 p.m. and you know Remy goes to bed around 7 and so we thought oh man but I really wanted to go it was important to Fran so we kind of went mm. I was telling him I'll stay home with Remy you just go and he's like what if we just went together 
You know, we're driving there. Remy's already fallen asleep in the car. It's like 5.45. We're like, oh, we are so fucked. Like, this is a terrible idea. You turn to me and you're like, I don't know about this. And I was like, you know what? I don't know either. But sometimes you just have to do the thing. You know, I was very proud of you because that was very non-like you norm, like getting out of that type to go, getting out of the ordinary to go to something like like a festival and taking the kid and doing Unlike the me? Whole... Oh, I think that's so like me to just try and take him. No, I think so. For well, sure. I'm very excited and I'm very proud of you because I think that was one of the most amazing moments I have had with my child. I'm and so I glad. Think... I think you and I were both just, I don't know how this is going to yeah, go. Yeah, and it's... we just did it and it was amazing. I think sometimes you got to try it and sometimes it's a nightmare, but we just kind of agreed if it was a nightmare that I would deal with him. Fran would go say hi to his uh, niece and I would deal or we would just turn around and go home at some juncture. And Remy partied. Remy had a pina colada and uh, danced and um, we got McDonald's french fries. It was just a night filled of health and wellness um, because, yeah, there was a McDonald's right there when we were leaving the hotel. It was dark. We drove back. He slept in the car the whole way home, and then you managed to transfer him to bed. So do the thing sometimes, you know. I, I would say he was pretty tired yesterday from it because, of course, you get your kid to bed at 9 or 10 o'clock. They still get up at five, right? Like they still get up at their time. You think, oh, this is the night. This is the night that, you know, he's going to sleep better than ever. And no. Yeah, my parents, my father, they started really early. But it started great. Like that was such a wonderful experience. And it sets the precedent. It sets the precedent. Like I have always, I, my motto is what's the worst case scenario? And if I can deal with the worst case scenario, I do the thing. Because the best case scenario out, uh, like, out challenge or out grows the worst case scenario in many ways for the events like what happened last Saturday. And it was so amazing. The worst thing, it w he would have gone crazy. He would have been cra like super sleepy, cranky, and we would have to come home. Well, that's not that bad. But the upside was what actually happened, which was we had such a blast. He was dancing all evening. He had a smile on his face all day. We got home. He was happy. He went to bed. He woke up early with Dale. And we went on to have another amazing rest of my father's day, which was great. It was a lot of fun. And I'm very thankful for such a thoughtful day. Yeah, I, I remembered to smuggle a gift before I left Dallas. I got a Father's Day gift. I was proud of myself. But usually I'm not as good. You know, or you, we buy gifts last minute, but I recognized before I left town that I was going to be here and probably not have any time to get anything or order anything for Father's Day. So I hid it away. I got it before I left town. Um, yeah, it was really nice. Something I will say, as much as I have moments, uh, you know, Fran, going back to the kind of you asking me how I'm going to cope or saying I need mental <laughs> mental therapy. No, I, I said we. I never said you. I, I said, um, like... So you know, I will say this. I think that one of the best parts for me about having made this move is kind of the simplicity of getting out and about that it we're so caught up and it's taking some time to adjust to the fact that even yesterday, for instance, I had been trying to get a hold of this venue because they're open a few days a week. They're more of a wedding venue, but they're open a few days a week as like a pool club. And I couldn't get a hold of anyone. I had actually, before I told Fran what we were doing, I had called them a couple of times. No one answered the phone. And I was like, oh gosh, I don't even know if they'd be like open or if you have to make a reservation, you know, because like, God, think about trying to go out on a holiday like that, you know, maybe not Father's Day as much, but, you know, uh, in, in a big city, you don't have a reservation at a restaurant. It's like, forget about it. And so that's still kind of ingrained here that I'm getting online to make reservations to go places. And we roll in and there's like, not that many people there and it's totally chill and there's towels and it's, it's just been cool in that way that we can just like roll to the beach without a lot of planning, hop in the car. Oh, we should, we, we should go get a glass of wine. We can go somewhere without any planning. Um, how nice is that? I mean, that's what you want because I feel like there's already enough hurdles when you're a parent to just try and get out of the house and try and plan something to do. So, 
Uh, yeah, so that's been quite nice, but I'm still trying to train myself that that's how things work around here, um, because everything back in the States does feel so planny and complicated sometimes. So, uh, so it was nice. It was a nice day. We went swimming and had food and, um, I enjoyed it. I hope you. I think you ended up paying, which that wasn't really the intention. I didn't mean for you to pay oh, for babe. your. I didn't mean to, for you to pay for your but father's the day. Thing is that <laughs> it has been the best. Like just, we had a great day. That was a my note thing. It was more about having some quality time with you all, and. There is a lot of that here. There's a lot of quality time, quality time together, I'm sure, you know. There is, right? Yeah. I mean, we get a lot of that, which is good for, for better and worse, right? Because it is just us together the majority of the time. So um, I'm sure it'll be nice for Fran. He gets to hang out with some friends when he's going back home for work. And, um, I'm, you know, I'm sure... I'm dreading it, you know? Like, right now, I'm minutes i cannot even say hours and minutes away to having to take off in my car yeah, to go to the airport we finished this and he's leaving i have like a huge like knot in my stomach about it because it's tough it's tough to leave i i'm i love dallas and people that know me know that i like dallas has been home and i have n nothing bad to say about it because those things don't stick with me but i don't miss it right now I'm not in a point where I said, oh, my God, I need to go back because I miss civilization. I don't. I really don't. This time has felt that this time has been great with you all. It has been such a wonderful time to connect and reconnect. I have an important question for you, and I want you to be honest. Okay. Do you or do you not already have an insomnia cookie order lined up to be delivered tonight when you get to Dallas? You know, the answer to that question, it's I have it lined up, but I haven't pushed send because you cannot schedule it on the app. What is your order lined oh, up? Tell us, tell us your order that you have. the peanut butter cup. Mm -hmm. That's a deluxe cookie, right? Deluxe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Uh, peanut butter, cheap. I like to double up and peanut butter. Mm -hmm. And that's it, you know, because... You're going to pay for two cookies. Yes, because if I order five cookies, I'll eat five cookies. If I order ten cookies, I'll... Like, there's no... There, like, you want to see this intensity? I am very... I believe to be a very disciplined person, but I know my limits. I would pay big money for that recipe. The recipe's on... The ingredient deck is online, but it's full of, like, preservatives and other ingredients that you can't pronounce, which I'm sure is the case, because I would assume that they're batching that dough and shipping it around the country to all locations. A couple of you have it's written me... It's very consistent. Like, if you order it in Austin, it's exactly the oh, same cookie. Well, I have not... I have not ordered it in any other location. <laughs> oh, sister, I learned, like, I, I, like, I don't travel places where insomnia don't deliver. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, well, that's good. I thought, I know, I was hoping if I had gone home before Father's Day, I was going to try and smuggle dough back and see if insomnia would just sell me, like, a tub of dough that I could fly back with, and I would just deal with it at customs, but uh, we'll see. So, yeah, I, I have ordered some stuff, if I'm being honest. I've ordered some stuff to my mailbox at home, some mainly clothes for Remy, um, because I realized that getting rid of a lot of clothes has been the best thing ever for me because I frankly don't have a lot here. It's kind of easy to stay on top of. It took me like 10 minutes to hang a bunch of my stuff yesterday. I'm finally able for the first time in my life. Yeah. That was the solution. Just so you all know, if you are a mess and your closet's always a mess, you need less. It's the only solution, in my opinion, unless you have someone every day hanging stuff up for you, which that's just not feasible for <laughs> most of us, right? I, um... I'm able to do it. I'm able to stay on top of it, which is shocking. And uh, But Remy doesn't have enough clothes because, you know, these little rats, they're just dirty, 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 and you got to change them. I can wear the same outfit usually. I mean, he'll trash me up too, but I can usually, I could wear the same outfit a couple of times before washing it or wear the same jeans, you know, what, three, four times before I throw it through the wash. But that's just... Uh, but I, I cannot skate. Like, I do not go on skate every time I wear something. Like, look at this. These pants are already trash. Yeah. Like, he... Blood, peanut butter. 
anything and everything. You got to do the sniff test. You don't know what it is. But anyway, yeah, that's my greatest takeaway so far. If you have less things, it's easier. <laughs> I have one know. last question before we wrap up. Okay. I didn't know you Dude, had a first question. I didn't know either. I this just, is your last question. This is my last. Your only. My first last medium question. Okay. So today we marked, or you marked, the month gap. Today is one month in our beautiful new journey. Yeah, it's been one month. What is the biggest highlight of this month? Or top three, if you want. Thank you for letting me know you were going to ask me this question on the show. Today. Oh, I like I like to hear it from your heart. I like our on listeners. On a day that I'm feeling like. I like your listeners to to know the raw opinion of Jenna Owens. On a day that I'm feeling like highly emotional and somewhat negative about the whole thing, uh, the highlight for me has been, uh, without a doubt, the the slowing down, which is still a work in progress for sure, because I don't think you just all of a sudden achieve something like that. We're, you know, our nervous system is so strung out from living in a city and kind of that go, 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 you know, like I gotta, I gotta go to Target. I gotta go to Walgreens. I gotta pick shit up. I gotta, you know what I mean? Like we all, we all deal with it. So I still wouldn't say I'm anywhere close to where I'm aspiring to be, but I will say that I do feel worlds more chill and relaxed than I was feeling in that, you know, previous 30 days. So for me on an overall level, the slowing down of life has definitely been kind of the highest highlight um definitely definitely that's it because that was a goal i wanted on a personal level on a familiar level you know with remy and it's, with it's so important like it's something that i noticed you know i noticed i'm struggling in- though that's what i mean this is not i mean it's a work in progress to slow down but i'll say and i don't even know if you notice this as much but I've been cooking more for me, much to my dismay, because I do miss ordering food online. And there's a lot of scenarios where I would order food online. So I'm not always eating exactly what I would prefer to be eating or I'm hungry sometimes and then sometimes not eating as healthy as I want just because it's all we have. But I'm learning, you know, it's a challenge to kind of learn how to do this and adapt. Um, I think adapting is going to make me grow. And I want to say right now, I'm kind of hitting that wall of just like having a little bit of a hard time. Um, just missing some of my homebody comforts and um, also like have a lot of concern about Remy missing homebody comforts and um, yeah so I'm struggling a little bit right now as I said earlier but send her some luck I think you know trying to cook more it's not my favorite thing to do it's not I don't think I don't know if that's ever going to change it's not my favorite thing to do but it has been fun and interesting and, and nice you do it great I do it so great with four different batches of peanut butter cookies I've made. Fran is still ordering two different varieties as soon as he lands in Dallas. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. Someone send me the insomnia recipe, please, because I followed one on so, TikTok and it did not make the cut. You know, it was really good. It's been really exponentially good from batch to batch. And even that dough that you put in the freezer, it tastes better every time that you put it in the oven. I think it's because all the flavors are just mingling I'm together. I'm a dough girl, though. Like, I'm a dough girl. And Remy also. Like, uh, he, he's he a can munch the yeah. whole dough. I'm a dough girl more than a coach cookie girl. So, I, and peanut butter. I mean, peanut butter cookies are good, but, like, that is so not my wheelhouse and forte. It's a totally different ingredient deck to work with. Now, if you were talking regular chocolate chip cookies, I can do those pretty good. But it's a different dough. It's different ingredients. I don't even really think what I've been using is brown sugar. What I've been using appears to be brown tinted regular granulated sugar, not packed sugar. My suitcase coming back is about to be weird as hell. If I get stopped in customs, they're going to find my, like, I really am missing my caramel pecan from Central Market Coffee. I just haven't been loving the coffee. The coffee in the coffee shops here is great, but, like, buying it in the Mercados, the coffee is just not my favorite because I love trashy flavored coffee. Um, So, yeah, I'm thinking about doing... I I have grand plans for my extra empty suitcase I'm bringing home. Yeah, customs is going to be like, what's happening here? You know, it's going to be like dough, coffee, 
ground coffee in an unmarked brown bag from Central Market. It's going to be like some other gluten-free things that I can't find here. I'm pretty I... sure we can find something to, like the oil that they put in the... You need to Google that. Or I'll Google it. The oil that they put in the, in the beans to infuse the flavor. Maybe yeah. we can make trash coffee great again. I'm sure. I'm sure we can. So off, but again, y'all. I mean, this is what I mean. These things are so little, but, but over those time, things make you feel like home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what it is? Because it's so silly, isn't it? But it's like. The tiniest things, because it's what you do every day. You know what I mean? Whether it's like that really comfy chair in your house that you love. It's not about the materialistic like chair necessarily. It's like what you're so comfortable sitting in. The bed that you get in every night, the pillow, you know, which we did bring pillows, but um, the, 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 the mattress, you know, the kind of things that you've curated in your house, the coffee that you make every morning with the creamer, you know, just those little moments of your day that are nice little pieces of sunshine on any shit day that you might have that's otherwise, you know, maybe not a great day. Like on a day like today, right? Taking him to school, I'm highly emotional. Like I'm just not doing my best and I just don't have any any connection to like that, to like to something that I've loved for the last 15 years of my life, even if it's just something as stupid as like bad coffee <laughs> that I really love. So yeah, I'm just like having a hard time with that. And then combine that with your kids screaming and crying, going to school for the first time. Oh, you did great. Oh, well, thanks for tuning in. I'd love to do a week of some questions um, or an episode with a lot of questions because I know you all have a lot of questions. So info at finish.com. I'm going to gather up all the questions and we'll get them. Um, I'll get some over to Fran and we can really tackle uh, some of your questions, whether it's about the move, whether it's about parenting, whatever you want to do. Let's have a nice answer your questions episode next week. And, and we'll have all about our first travels after our big move yeah. next week. Awesome. All right. We'll see you next week. Bye.